Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Okay, so uh, we are talking about the Gaussian paint class. Now I want to point out something about the, um, something when using the Gaussian paints show input dialog method, right? So since in this video we're going to be using the Gaussian paint class, let's go ahead and import it. So I'm going to import Java X dot swing dot Gaussian paint. So all we're doing is importing the Gaussian paint class located in the Java X dot swing package in the Java API. And we know that with the Gaussian paint, we don't have to create an, um, an object. We can just directly use the name of a class and then use the methods in there. All right, so what I want to do is I want to use a Gaussian paint show input dialog method to ask the user to enter, let's say, a number, any number. All right, so. Well, this, for this example, we'll tell the user to ask the user to type in an integer, right? So let's say we know we can just use Gaussian pane that show input dialog, and then we can pass into this argument what we want to display to the user as a label, right? So I'm going to t tell the user to please enter a number. Well. Let's say an integer, right? Or let's say, please enter an integer. Okay, so we know that this statement over here is going to pop up some kind of dialog box with a text box embedded in it. And it's going to tell the user to enter an integer. Okay, it's also going to provide a text box um, to, to the user to type in the number. So when the user types in the, that integer, the Gaussian pane dot show input dialog method is going to return whatever the user typed as a string, it's going to return it back to us. It's going to send it back to us. And we learned this in the in a couple of videos back that when it's returned back to us, we'll talk more about methods, right? But when it's returned back to us, when it's sent back to us, we need a place to store it. Now you may think that since the user is typing in an integer, you have to store it in an int variable, in an int variable, but no. Remember we talked about the fact that the show input dialog method returns whatever the user types as a string, even if the user types in a number. So in this case, the, assuming the user types in, let's say, 56. 56 is a number, right? But the Gaussian paints show input dialog method always returns a string. So we need to make sure we store whatever the user types okay, as a string, even if it's a number, right? But then, so let's let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to de declare a string variable, and I'm going to call it user number. Well, we know this user number. Okay, it's going to store whatever the user types um, in this text box. Okay, in this dialog box uh, with, with a text box. All right. So let's do that. We know that strings are objects, right? So <clears throat> this user number really, you know technically is really storing the memory address of this string object, but we can say that it's storing a string, right? It's not storing it directly, but it, it refers to the string. All right, so user number will contain whatever, whatever the user types, okay, Com which is basically a string, converted to a string, even if the user types in 56 as a number. But that's just a problem. Assuming we wanted to use that 56 in a math calculation, assuming we wanted to add the number two to 56 and then display it. Before any of that, let's just display what's stored in user number using the Gaussian pane show message dialog. So I'm going to call the Gaussian pane dot show message dialog, and we know with the Gaussian pane dot show message dialog, the first argument we typed in, in a couple of videos was null, and we said null will basically center the, the, the dialog box, okay, on the screen. There are, if we're writing, if, if we're dealing with programs that deal with um, multiple dialog boxes, we can change the, v the value here as the first argument. We can change it, and we can kind of you know position the dialog box somewhere else. But now we'll center the dialog box on the screen. The second argument, okay, arguments are basically what we are passing into this these parentheses. This is the first, and the second is going to come here. We'll talk more about methods, so methods, so you'll understand this. So it's going to be a string. And that's going to be what's going to be displayed on that dialog box. So I'm going to say that um, you typed. Oh, let's let's just let's just go ahead and type in exactly um, 
you know without without any string let's just type in user number so user number is basically what's going to be displayed on the italic box let's try this before that remember we talked about the system.exit method which basically terminates that extra task which is called a thread started by the g option pane uh, class or, or started by using the g option pane so let's do that system dot exit i'm going to pass in the value zero and zero is going to be sent back to the operating system which is going to signify to the operating system that or signal to the operating system that this program was able to run get to this point and and basically <coughs> when zero is sent to that that operating system is basically an indication that the program runs successfully all right and it, it will also terminate that extra um, thread okay that is that started by the g option pain class so let's try this program and see what happens so run this please enter an integer i'm going to enter 56 and hit ok and then we can see the g option pain's show, uh, show message dialog is displaying 56. now this 56 you may think it uh, it looks like a number right it's a, it, it, it's a number but the thing is it's really stored as a string because the g option pain's show input dialog always returns a string so we can't really use it in math calculations. What if we wanted to, let's say, add 2 to this 56 and display it? If we try to do that, let's try to do that. Let's add 2 to this user number to see if it works. Because if really 56 is stored here, right, and it's a number, then 56 plus 2 will give us 58. Let's try it. Run. Let's type in 56. Hit OK. And we can see 562. It, it didn't add to 56 to give us 58 it basically concatenated the number 2 to the string 56 because we remember um, show input dialog always returns a string so a really a string was what's stored here it wasn't a number so if we want to uh, use the user's response in calculations we need to first of all make sure that whatever the users uh, the, the, the user response the user's response is you know you know whatever whatever it is whatever it is stored here we, we need to make sure that it's converted to a number a real number before we can actually do math calculations with it right by default the show input dialog method always returns a string all right so how do we do that so before that if we don't do that all right if we don't do that we are over here we are actually concatenating a number to a string and that's why we saw 562 so let's hit okay and then fix this all right so we know we have a number, uh, a string, uh, basically a number as a string here, a user number. We need it as a real integer, so we can add two to it. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and comment this line with, you know, single, basically single line comments, two forward slashes before what I want to comment. And then I know that I have a string here. We can use, okay. We can use methods in, in what's called um, wrapper classes. We'll talk more about it in a way, way uh, later on. But it's wrapper classes. Okay, they're called wrapper classes. And these wrapper classes have methods for converting, um, you know, whatever these are types to, let's say, integers or longs or, or doubles or floats. Unlike the scanner class, the scanner class has methods already, next int, next double, to convert whatever these are types to let's say integers or doubles but the option pain class doesn't directly have methods to basic to be able to convert the user's input to let's say a number so we use the methods in java's wrapper classes okay w-r-a-p-p-e-r wrapper classes to do that and i'll show you how it works but we'll, we'll learn more about wrapper classes going forward so we know we have a string here right but we, we really want that string okay Th that number is stored here as a string we need that number stored uh, converted to an integer and so the way you try to convert what's stored here into an integer is by using okay one of um, Java, the methods in Java's wrapper classes this way so for example we want to convert it to, to an integer so I'm going to type in integer dot pass int int this way Okay, and what are we trying to pass? We are trying to pass or trying to convert something to an integer. And what are we trying to convert? What we are trying to convert is the, the number which is stored as a string in user number. So I'm going to pass it here as an argument. I'm going to pass it in as an argument, meaning I'm just you know, writing, writing it here, user number. And 
this integer that pass int is going to pass this value, this user number, to an integer. Okay, we are passing or we are converting whatever is stored here as a string to an integer. And once you're done, once it's done doing that, it's going to return it. It's going to send it back to us. But when it's sending it back to us, it ha it's already done converting whatever is stored here as a string to an integer. So, we, so that means it's returning the result as an integer, which means we need, we, need, we need a place to store it. We need to receive it if it's sending it back to us, if it's giving it back to us. And if it's an integer that's coming back to us, we need to make sure we store it in an int variable. So I'm going to declare an int variable here. I'm going to call it user. I'm just going to say user integer. Right? Maybe the variable names are not really clear, but I think it's it is, right? User so this is user number first it was a string, right? And then user integer is going to store the results after it after it has been converted to an integer, to a to a real integer. And then now user integer is going to store whatever is returned after it's done converting the user's input, first of all, as a string to an integer. So over here, what we are doing is we are passing whatever is stored in user number, which is really a string, all right? That 56 was stored as a string. We are passing it to an integer. We are kind of converting, pass means kind of convert it into an integer, right? Process it as an integer. And once it's done, it's going to give it back to us. It's going to say, come right here and say, okay, where, where, where are you? I'm, I'm going to give it to you. But luckily we have an equal sign here and we, we have a place to store it. Since it's returning it as an integer, we declared our variable as an integer, as an int. Okay, we declared it as an int to store the int variable that's being returned. Oh, the, sorry, the int value that's being returned. So now, let's not let's just uncomment this. Let's not use user number because we know user number is a string. Let's use user integer because we know user integer is an int. And since it's an int, since it's really sorry. Since it's really a number, we can add two to it, right? And then it can display the right result to us. So when we compile this and we run it, let's type in 56. Two is being added to that integer, right? Hit OK, we have 58. So now it's seeing this user integer as a real number because we converted the user's response. We know the GeoOption Paint's show input dialog method always returns a string. So we store that here, it always returns a string. If we want to use that value or that result, whatever is it typed, even if it was a number, if we want to use it in calculations, because the GeoOption Pane show input dialog method always returns, returns a string, we have to first of all uh, convert it to, what, uh, to that number that we want, in this case an integer, where we are converting to an integer, and then we are adding two to it, right? <clears throat> we are converting it with the, to the data type to basically int, right, to int to an int, and then adding two to it over here, and then displaying it. So this is how, this is one way you'd um, convert, okay, values, okay, that are returned from the GeoOption Paint um, show input dialog as strings. This is how one way to convert them to real numbers so we can use them in calculations, for example. If you want them as strings, then you don't have to do the step. You can just keep them as strings and use them. But if you want them as numbers, you have to go out and convert them. Now, this is how you would convert it to an int. How would you convert it to, let's say, a double or a float? Now, there are several methods in Java's wrapper classes to do that, and we'll, we'll look at the, uh, the other ones in the next video. But this is how you, for example, convert the value story as a string to an int and use it in your program. Right. All right. So if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time for the next video. All right then. Bye bye.